The Nazca Lines are undoubtedly one of Earth's most perplexing ancient relics. Not only are they unimaginably big, but their accuracy still baffles all who try to explain them, even to this day. With many of these ancient drawings seemingly only visible or indeed fully appreciated from great altitude, many people over the centuries have predictably pondered upon the possibility of their having once been ancient flying machines. And although many of these ancient marks could be perceived as possibly past runways or landing sites, there exists one site in particular that possesses some of the most compelling, if little shared, characteristics of them all. Known as El Fuerte, it can be found amongst a pre-Columbian archaeological site in Bolivia. It is believed that for over a thousand years, the site served as a ceremonial center for various pre-Columbian cultures, ultimately becoming the home of the Inca, who turned the site into the east capital of their empire. We have often stated that we strongly believe that at some point within Earth's distant history, a highly advanced intercontinental civilization once flourished, building enormous stone structures. With knowledge and capabilities in stone carving and building, we, the modern man, are yet to unravel. And although the site consists of an average ancient settlement, complete with buildings, architecture, and irrigational ruins, the most intriguing feature of the site, and the purpose for the video, is what was once carved out of the solid rock atop the mountain. Along the crest of the hill is the most intriguing feature of the site, or possibly Nazca itself, known as the El Cascabel, which can be translated as the rattle. It is two parallel lines oriented to the eastern sky, with a position of azimuth at 71 degrees and an altitude of about 6.75 degrees. Interestingly, this is the exact orientation of the rise of Pleiades at different times within history. Why was this curious carving etched into the top of this mountainside within Bolivia? Was this ancient site once used as a launching pad? Furthermore, intriguingly, much of the surrounding stone seems to have experienced ancient quarrying. Is this ancient mountain the site of an ancient quarry, once done by a group who had flying Viminas at their disposal? An incredible site, which we find highly compelling. Although many of our viewers express a belief that all ancient ruins were constructed by our ancestors with methods learned over eons of trial and error, some also devoutly attest to them eventually succumbing to a biblically documented deluge. The fact remains, at this current time in history, we cannot prove this beyond doubt. As a collaboration who actively researches and seeks out these specific ruins in question, we have come into contact with considerable evidence to support many of these ruins having once been submerged, either by fresh or, more often than not, an ancient sea. However, due to their possible extraordinary antiquity, these subversive experiences may have been merely due to climactic changes, rather than divine intervention. There is also growing hostility towards the once popularly touted proposition of ancient aliens, or perhaps ancient astronauts. Many governmental bodies have supposedly come clean over recent years regarding alien disclosure, releasing a number of apparent smoking guns to the public, often videos which included military testimonies regarding said encounters. Is it therefore such an absurdity to merely postulate that, based on currently presented information, that an alien civilization, clearly far more advanced than us, is currently observing our planet and species? Perhaps we once knew these beings, before something clearly happened within our past, something which made us forget a considerable amount of our own history. Many of the ancient structures found upon our planet defy belief or explanation. Is it so unforgivable to ponder whether our ancestors received an intellectual nudge at some point within antiquity? There are also many ancient tribes 
whose ancestral accounts often include some sort of visitation, with some, like the Dogans, celebrating the processions of the Sirius star system, processions we didn't confirm as accurate until earlier this century. And the Scythians could be seen as the most valuable of these tribes, mainly due to a mysterious idol, once found frozen within one of their ancient tombs, sunk deep into permafrost among the Altai Mountains of Serbia. It is known as the Scythian Spaceman, and for good reason, it must be remembered when looking upon such objects with eyes from a modern world that the clothing this idol wears is far removed from the tribe in which created it. It is not only unusual, but eerily reminiscent of our own modern spacesuits. What's more, and perhaps the most damning evidence, is his space helmet, a device that would have been crucial for communication with a being from an entirely different atmosphere. What was the Scythian spaceman? What does it represent? Did the Eurasian nomads actually encounter an ancient astronaut? We find the existence of such artifacts highly compelling. Hey guys, so I'm sure you're aware of the Nazca Lines of Peru, the enormous drawings found upon the land created using a vast array of subjects. What is especially interesting regarding these ancient lines found all over the world is that to truly appreciate the images, you would have to view them from space. Some of the drawings are even waving, leading many to wonder over the years regarding their original purpose. The largest lines can be found in Bolivia. Known as the Sajama Lines, they were clearly constructed by an intelligent force. Many theories regarding the original function of the lines have been put forward over the years, though to this day, the actual purpose remains a mystery. Covering an area of approximately 22,525 square kilometers, they're truly massive. Each individual line is around 3 meters wide, with the longest measuring over 20 kilometers in length. However, amazingly, the largest known drawing of one subject is actually a modern creation, and it is a drawing of a man. Called the Mari Man, or Stuart's Giant, it was discovered by Trek Smith on the 26th of June, 1998. A charter pilot flying between Mari and Cooper Petty in the vast remote bushlands of southern Australia. Created deep in the outback, far away from civilization, the creators of this gigantic drawing remain a complete mystery. 4.2 kilometers tall and with a perimeter of over 28 kilometers, due to the massive undertaking these lines would have been, the huge resources they demanded on the land and in the air, the fact that no one saw it being created or additionally reported it, its creation will remain extremely perplexing. To create such an image, a fleet of vehicles would have been required a system of radio communication and a team of individuals to create it. All this completed within a dry, remote, unforgiving corner of the Australian outback, without telling anyone that it's there? The Mari Man depicts an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or stick. It lies on a plateau at Finnis Springs, 60 kilometers west of the township of Mari in central South Australia. Was the Mari Man made by extraterrestrial visitors to our planet as a form of orbital indication to what inhabits the planet? Although the mystery of the Mari Man may be a new one, it's just as confusing as ancient lines. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. The Nazca Lines, unquestionably one of the most enigmatic ancient sites on Earth. Enormous ancient artworks that, since their modern discovery, a number of individuals have attempted to, and seemingly failed to, adequately explain. Created to such enormous scale, many of these theories put forward demanded the utilization of advanced ancient flying machines just to enable their full appreciation. However, what many are not aware of is another particularly baffling structure that litters Nazca. Known as Pukios. They are stone structures which corkscrew deep into the ground, each connected to a channel of groundwater far below the surface. It must be noted, for many millennia, the ancient sites these mysterious structures connected, and indeed the locations in which they are found within, have endured brutal episodes of drought, and for any ancient civilization to have flourished here, 
would have required tremendous skills and ingenious solutions. And the Pequeos could undoubtedly be perceived as striking examples of this, displaying this ancient group's high level of intelligence. Not only that, but we feel strong indication of a civilization who had drastically more capability and technology at their disposal than that of the Incas. And although modern academia attempt to discreetly shrug off such astonishing works of ancient genius with the simple term pre-Incan, we believe that these pre-Incans they speak of were once part of a civilization far in advance of anything funded individuals will ever willingly admit to. As explained by Rosa La Sapinara of the Institute of Methodologies for Environmental Analysis, satellite imagery has discovered a remarkable past function to these once mysterious spiral holes. They have realized that they were an ancient complex hydraulic system designed to extract and move groundwater over tremendous distances beneath the arid landscape above them. According to La Sapinara, Examining satellite images has allowed scientists to analyze the movement of pumped water throughout the desert. Quote, All holes were interconnected via a system of tunnels, similar to modern subways. Each spiral hole appears to serve the function of a pump, filling the tunnels with air and directing the water to a specific location. In this way, water flowed to ancient settlements from where it was most desired from areas of abundance." End quote. It seems that scientists have been forced to reluctantly admit, due to the overwhelming evidence of the system's sophistication, that the original engineer's know-how and workmanship was of such high quality that not only does it rival modern water delivery systems, but even after several millennia, many of the Paquios still function perfectly. Furthermore, to have initially built them, the builders required as yet undiscovered advanced equipment, such as air pumping technologies. Mechanisms far out of the realms of any academically studied ancestor. They also required an intimate understanding of geology, many meters below their feet. And indeed, the understanding of how they were going to manipulate future movement of the groundwater below. Also, intriguingly, many parts of these tunnels successfully passed through tectonic faults, as if they had prior advanced knowledge of these also. We personally find this discovery of the Pequeo's past function as nothing short of miraculous, making them some of the strongest evidence for not only a highly advanced pre-Incan culture, but of a technologically developed ancient people with in-depth knowledge of geology, hydrology, and many other seemingly modern understandings, developed through the utilization of advanced, technologically accomplished study. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.